I know this is going to come off a little, um, but okay, we'll start. We're going to have um, 33, 4, and 2. No, 33, 4, and 1 with 20 KOs, Bad Intentions, Brain Bleed, Jermaine Taylor versus Sergio, the Latin Snigmora, 27 and 27, 3 and 2 with 9 KOs on February the 2nd, 2015. Now, you ask yourself the question, how in the hell did Sergio Mora get a title shot? What about Jermaine Taylor? How did he even come across getting a title, period? You know, Jermaine Taylor hasn't lost in, you can say, a little over four years. He hasn't lost since 2009, if I'm correct. That was off of Abraham when he was knocked out. Then before that, he was knocked out by Carl Frotch in a 12th round. Before that, he had two other losses, one by Kelly Pavlik where he was knocked out simply cold. Remember, you'll never forget the iconic, iconic photo where he's just laying in the corner. You know, like literally sleep. He comes back, he fights Kelly Pavlik again, loses in a way somewhat similar to the way um, Roy Jones lost to Antonio Tarver in the third fight. So, I'm T Street Controversy. This is T Street Controversy Live. I cover every single major fight live. Jermaine Taylor is the IBF 160 pound champion. Gennady Gennadyevich Golovkin is the WBA number one contender for the WBC 160 pound champion. Who is the WBO 160-pound champion? Who is the WBO 160-pound? Oh, wait a minute. Peter Kidd, Chocolate Quillen dropped that belt. And now we have Andy Lee versus Billy Joe Saunders fighting for that belt. So when it comes to the WBC, that is Miguel Cotto. And let's face it, we're not going to see Miguel Cotto versus Jermaine Taylor. We're not going to see Miguel Cotto versus Peter Quillen. We're not going to see Miguel Cotto versus Danny Jacobs. We'll be lucky if we see Miguel Cotto versus Gennady Gennady Viskolovky. But once again, I'm T-Street Controversy, your most complete boxing reporter on YouTube, and I cover every single major fight live. So, you know, to backtrack a little bit, I probably said it already, but since I do my videos live, sometimes I forget what I said two minutes previously in the video. So I'm going to say on February the 2nd, 2015, you're going to have Jermaine Taylor taking on Sergio the Latin Snake Mara in Biloxi, Mississippi for the IBF 160-pound title on ESPN Friday Night Fights. First thing you ask is, Sergio Mora, what? How did he get a title shot? The former contender, what? Now, if you look at him, he hasn't lost in quite some time. And also, to compare him or equate him to a boxer you may be familiar with, you can say, well, he's somewhat like Mauricio Herrera, except he's so much more less exciting. You may remember him from the two fights with Vernon Forrest. He was a 154-pound champion at one point in time. Um, he fought Shane Mosley, in which a fight he had a draw with Shane Mosley. That was on pay-per-view, but for crying out loud. And now you look at him. After all these years, he's finally getting a shot against Jermaine Taylor, a guy he should have fought years ago. So when you look at the IBF standings, right, you have Hassan Indam. He's the number one contender. He was at the Jermaine Taylor versus Sam Solomon fight. But remember, Jermaine Taylor beat Sam Solomon for the belt. So Jermaine Taylor is allowed one voluntary defense. And then he has to fight Endon. So basically, you might as well wrap Jermaine Taylor's 2015 up already. Because he's already fighting in February, Sergio Moore. Then if he wins, or if Sergio Moore wins, they have to fight Endon. Period is that. So... When you look at Curtis Stevens, when you look at Felix Stern, when you look at Peter Quillen, when you look at David Lemieux, and I'm sure I'm probably missing some names, the the IBF rankings at 160 pounds, you think, oh, okay, well, the reason why basically Sergio Moore is getting a shot is because Jermaine Taylor's an Al Heyman fighter. Sergio Moore is an Al Heyman fighter. Sergio Moore said he's been promised by Al Heyman to get a title shot, and Lord knows, behold, he's getting his title shot. Now, let's talk about the controversy of the fight. Well, if you don't know, Jermaine Taylor has an open case for basically shooting his cousin in the dick or somewhere around the dick area. He shot him in the dick. He shot him in and or around the dick area. So, He's got an open court case, and there's rumors of him throwing a brick at a female or something. I don't know how true that is. I doubt that it's true. But then you think about who's Jermaine Taylor as the person, and then what happened to that brain bleed? Well, go to Jermaine Taylor's Instagram. Watch some of Jermaine Taylor's recent interviews, and you tell me if he doesn't show signs of having something mentally wrong or something basically really not there. I don't know. Maybe he's just selling himself, hey, it's working, because guess what? On February 2nd, 2015, I'm going to be tuning in to Jermaine Taylor versus Sergio Moore like this. Exciting. So, 
He had an Instagram video he posted about two weeks or so ago. Right now, it's January the 4th, 24th, 2015. I'm T Street. Is it January the 4th or January the 5th? Yeah. <laughs> it's January the 4th, 20. I'm almost sweating. It's a little warm in here. It's a little warm outside. Give me a minute. T Street Controversy, T Street Controversy Live. Please subscribe. At this time, this will be a good time for you to read the description box. I'm going to go turn the heat off and open up a window. Please subscribe. Now, first, I thought to myself, okay, all right, well, at that point in time, before Jermaine Taylor took on Sam Solomon, Peter Quillen had already dropped his belt. So I was thinking, okay, all right, let me try to look at the Al Heyman plan. You have one 160-pound title in the Al Heyman organization, and that 160-pound title belongs to Jermaine Taylor. So I'm thinking, you got Peter Quillen, who dropped his belt, and then you got Danny Jacobs, who's the WBO, WBA Regular champion, he's not the remember Golovkin has the full WBA title, so I'm thinking to myself, okay, maybe he's gonna fight him. But now I'm seeing Sergio Moore, and Sergio Moore, when he signed with Al Heyman back in uh, what was that mid mid to fall 2014, he's been basically saying on social media and interviews that basically Al Heyman pretty much, you know, quote unquote, no, actually, it's not a quote, but paraphrasing that Al Heyman promised him a title shot. So then I see him fighting. Jermaine Taylor, I'm thinking, oh, there you go, classic, higher level, top tier Al Heyman fighter, Jermaine Taylor against the classic, low level Al Heyman fighter, and Sergio Mara. Can Sergio Mara beat Jermaine Taylor? Yes, he can. Can Jermaine Taylor beat Sergio Mara? That's the part I'm not so sure about. Now, I understand, you know, Jermaine Taylor is the more marketable name, but Sergio Mara has a pretty nasty, crafty style. And if you look at what Sam Solomon was doing, and if Sam Solomon didn't get injured, there's a good chance he probably could have beaten Jermaine Taylor. But that's just my own personal opinion. I'm T Street Controversy. This is T Street Controversy Live, of course, and I cover every single major fight live. Am I excited for this fight? No, not really. Does it mean anything? No, not really. But there are two names that you know, and it's a fight that should have happened before, so that's probably what they're going to sell it off of. It's going to be on ESPN Friday Night Fights for crying out loud, so which means Jermaine Taylor isn't back up to Showtime Championship boxing level yet. So much more to talk about, but I guess you know what I do is um, the further there's fight. Okay, I'll tell you what. Since the fight is a little less than a month away, I'm going to be doing probably maybe about two, three more videos on the fight leading up to the weigh-in and then covering the fight. So this is just the initial video, you know, just pretty much announcing the news of the fight and then we'll go from there. T-Street Controversy, T-Street Controversy Live, please subscribe.